Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. In today's video, we're going to take you just around the house here, show you kind of what springtime looks like on the homestead. Um, for those of you that may be new around here, me and my husband and two kids live on about 18 acres in the foothills of North Carolina. We grow around 80 to 90% of our own food. And this is what springtime looks like around here, and I hope y'all enjoy it. I think we'll start right over here. Y'all probably saw the video of us planting potatoes. If you did, they're actually up. They've started sprouting, um, and they're coming up pretty good. This is the no-till bed that we've done the potatoes in. and uh, They're coming up all the way across there. Yeah, they're right? looking pretty good. This is actually the first I've seen them up. So Right here, right there's some, right there's a little one poking through. Yeah, they're coming up pretty good. There's two rows of them here. One row right there and then one row right there. Um, so they're looking all right. I'm, I'm happy with that. Here's our garlic that we planted last fall. And for the most part, it's looking, way, looking good as well. We have a lot of some really nice looking garlic, but then we have a lot of this. And I don't know what happened there. It's all looking pretty good, especially down here. This lower end is really looking good, but this lower end gets more sun as well. So that could make a difference. I want to show you something that concerns me. You see right here, there's a hole, there's a hole, and right there's what's left of an onion. We have got a problem with voles here. Um, I'll show you over here in another spot where they've done the same thing. and. I don't know what we're going to do about that, but it, from what I've seen so far, these no-till beds seem to be that way. I don't know if it's because you never come in and disturb the soil or what, but um, in our experience, we've had problems with no-till beds and, and vole pressure. So um, Yeah, this ain't the first time it's happened. No, they got our sweet potatoes last year, and honestly, I had never seen them eat an onion, but apparently they do. Right there's another one. Look at that. I mean, how aggravating is that? Stupid voles. You can go down there, you can feel the tunnel where he run around under the ground there. Now it's a vole, not a mole though. A mole won't eat a root crop. Moles go around and eat worms and grubs and stuff like that, but voles are like a little, they almost look like a mouse. And they're brown. <coughs> and they tunnel around through the soil and this is what they do. They eat the roots off of other crops. And so I'm, I'm hoping they don't get the rest of them, but I'm also a little worried about these. We come out this morning, I don't know if they got beat to death from the wind yesterday or what, because we had some terrible, terrible wind yesterday. But they're all flopped over and they don't, they don't particularly look as good as they did look. They were looking really, really good. And now, I don't know. I hope they come out of it. So next up, in the same no-till garden, we have our carrots that we sowed. And they are too thick, they'll have to be thinned out. But they are looking really good. We got pretty good germination on them. We do have some weeds in there with them. So, you know, that may present a problem. But um, so far they're looking really good. And I hope the, the voles don't find those because they probably love it to snack on a carrot. Then this is a garlic that apparently we left the clove in the ground last year because last year this was our garlic beds and evidently we missed one so we've just let it do its thing and we're going to dig it up when it gets time to harvest it and it's beautiful it is it's the prettiest garlic we have it makes me and andy think maybe like if we planted a small garlic patch and just pull it up as we need it right and let it do its thing and just keep coming back um if any of y'all do that let us know in the comments because i don't know why it wouldn't work i'll just be interested to see what this looks like when we do pull it i think it'll be honestly i don't see what it's going to hurt um it's probably not going to make the big bulb like these garlic over here do i don't think it's going to hurt anything and then this right here is also potatoes planted in this leaf pile that was an experiment that you can go back and check out on our uh, potato planting video um, and they are starting to pop up as well right there there's a few Right there's some. Yeah, right there's one. There. 
And if you look around, you, you see them a little bit everywhere. Right there's one. There's one. So, you know, I imagine the voles will have a heyday on those as well if they get into that. So, I just honestly never thought about the voles bothering these onions. So, I, now I'm, you can ask Megan, I've been worried about it all morning because yeah. we just discovered that this morning. Nothing's really started happening in this bed yet. We do have it planted. Um, we have planted all types of flower seeds in this bed. And if you don't know, this is going to be our pollinator garden. Um, this is sort of Maggie's little project here because she loves flowers. So, um, yeah, we've, we've got it planted, but, you know, nothing's had time to come up yet. Then here's our main garden, or what we call our main garden. We don't have anything in these raised beds right across here yet except some peas that we're going to have to start leaning up against the fence for them to run up. But we've got peas planted all the way around the outside edge. And then there is a grapevine here, but... It ain't been doing much lately. Yeah, it hadn't really done a lot the last lately. last few years. So, I think we're going to have tomatoes in this bed right here. And uh, look over the purple dead nettle. I won't let Andy pull it up. So, don't look at it and be like, oh my gosh, why ain't you pulled the weeds out of it? It's my fault. That, that's why, because... It's killing me. I'm yeah. dying to pull it up, but she won't let me. <laughs> Makes really good teas for allergy season. So what better way to keep it than just let it hang out here? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Down through the edge of this bed, we also have some more peas that, for whatever reason, I keep putting them over towards the fence and they keep leaning back out this way. So maybe eventually they'll actually start growing up the fence like they're supposed to. Now we're going to have to get in here in our cabbage and work today because, as you can see, our cabbage needs some dirt pulled up around them. So instead of actually, you know, if these were planted out in the garden, we would sort of hill them up. But I think we're going to give, get us some, uh, a couple of square bales of hay, and we're just going to put hay in around them and bunch up around those cabbage there. Because if we don't, and they stay like that, you know, the wind blows or whatever, they'll just kind of be flopping around out here and they'll eventually break them off. But they are looking amazing. But down here, old Mr. Vole has been back at work. This was the first thing I noticed last night that he had ate. We've got these multiplying onions that um, we got from Hoss Tools. And there was one there, there, and there. I come out here last night. Look, that looks loose around that too. But I come out here last night and was just checking things out. And that one and that one and that one were just gone. And there was just holes there. I stuck my finger down a hole and you could feel the tunnel where the vole had run. So, you know, that's, I guess, a mistake we should have done to fix this. Or something we should have done to fix this is we should have put some type of screen. And I've done this before, but it'd been so long other than last year with our sweet potatoes. We just hadn't really had a problem with voles a lot lately. But we should have put like a screen. I've seen people use like a wire mesh or something under the soil and then you just lay your soil on top of it. And when they try to dig in through that wire mesh, you know, it stops them. And uh, we should have done that here. And now I wish we had have, but it's too late now because the soil's in there and we've got stuff planted in it. So here is what we call our main garden. Right now it's nothing. I'm hoping to get in here and work today. Um, we had quite a bit of rain day before uh, see day before yesterday and so it's still just a little bit on the wet side but I'm hoping later this evening it'll dry out and I can get in here and work and I'm wanting to go ahead and get our sweet corn planted um, this bit this garden area right here is all fenced in pretty much protected from wildlife except for voles <laughs> and uh, I think we're gonna plant sweet corn our cucumbers Probably some sweet potatoes, and I really don't know what else in this spot here. We'll have to see how much room we have after we get that planted. And I'll give you a quick update on my herbs that we moved over here. So they look, they're, they lived, they lived. Yeah, they're actually looking good. They look better, actually, way better than they looked over yonder. So the only thing that died was a little patch of oregano right there, but the rest of it looks really good. And my thyme... Sage is putting off new growth. I actually didn't think it would live, but that sage actually looks really yeah, good. That say the sage looks the best that it's looked since it, I've had it. So it's fixing the bloom. It's got a lot more leaves on it. Like it, that yarrow really smothered it out last year, but um, it's got a lot more leaves and stuff on it. So hopefully, 
that'll be where it lives from now on is there. And I've had people comment and say, why don't you put it close to your kitchen? Uh, it's just the hop skipping a jump out here to run out here and get them. So it is close. Well, up here around our house, this is sort of, I guess you could call this part of our gardening too. Um, in amongst our landscaping, we've got coneflower planted there, purple coneflower there, and, and another purple coneflower here. And then there's lemon balm everywhere. <laughs> Note to self, lemon balm takes over. It does. We've got that stuff planted everywhere. Just the other day, Megan and Maggie, they planted some sunflower seeds and a bunch of other flower seeds all out and about through all this. So, you know, come summertime, this should really be a pretty place. But show them all our blooms on our strawberries we've got going here. So this is another place where we're trying to incorporate strawberry ground cover. And they're looking, they're, they're looking, looking really nice. Yep. Strawberries are looking great. And we've got two fig trees out here. We didn't get any figs last year. They got, they got rose froze. back, but uh, I believe this year we may have a some. And then we have this thing. What is that? It's an elderberry. Elderberry. It's, a, it's like a decorative elderberry though. Yeah, but it still has blooms on it. It's actually fixing the bloom. Look it at that right beautiful. there. It is beautiful. Like it's a black I, lace, I think is what it's called. Yeah, I left a tag on it. It is. We planted it last spring. Yes, a black lace elderberry. Which it is, is, it's beautiful. It's supposed to be more of an ornamental type elderberry, but it's still pretty. <laughs> and then there's our dandelion crop. <laughs> <laughs> that's thanks to Megan too, ain't it? Yeah, that's thanks to Megan too. Andy used to keep all that stuff out. And uh, well, you know, as you get older, you start to learn that what we always considered weeds aren't weeds anymore they ha they have a purpose and so you start to leave stuff like that and you can see right there my giant rosemary oh bush. yeah um that thing looks good too yeah and it's kicking and it actually bloomed this year i've never ever seen it bloom and it actually has some really pretty little blooms on it so i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but i don't either <laughs> so here's our peach tree we planted I don't know, a few videos back, and it's just now starting to come out. It's actually got some peaches coming on it. We'll probably end up having to pull those off because yeah. it don't need to have peaches on it right now. But it's just now starting to put out new growth, and so hopefully it's going to make it up here. Then right over here, we have just a few more uh, strawberry plants planted. And we're kind of letting them do their thing too, letting them be sort of like a cover crop and cover this whole area be kind of like a green mulch i guess you would say now it is more shaded on the front side of this house here so these probably aren't going to do as good as they are in some other areas they look really good though they do look good for no more sun than what they get up here so let's see where do you want to go now walk down to the raised beds sure so one thing i hope y'all notice during our little walk around today is everything is concentrated right here around the house for the most part we did that on purpose it's kind of one of those you live and you learn kind of deals and over the years growing all this stuff you realize that you're going to take better care of it if you can see it every day <laughs> so i mean i think that's like Permaculture 101, you put it in zone, what, what is that zone? Our zone would be at least zone one or two. Yeah, so you put it, that means you put it somewhere you pass every day, somewhere you walk past every day. And that is what we have finally accomplished for the most part here. So everything you've seen so far is just right here around our house. Very easy to get to. It's something that we have to look at every day or walk past every day and you know it's a lot easier if i'm walking down here to feed the pigs anyway to just reach over here and grab me a few weeds out of these beds before we get into the garden that i want to show is this bank here so this bank is like the old road bank from the road going down through here and it was just old nasty red dirt that was raw wouldn't really grow anything and over the years we've just continually mulched it and stuff and we've planted a bunch of flowers and stuff we got these irises on it 
and daylilies and just random stuff all down through here. And now this is one of my most favorite places on the, on our on our property now yeah. is this right here. When it gets in full bloom, it is beautiful down through here. But you know, it just goes to show you can turn what was an ugly space into a beautiful space. Um, irises were always some of my grandma's favorite flowers. I think they're probably one of my favorites as well. But anyways, right across the road here is our raised beds. So y'all seen before we have decided to turn this old chicken coop into a garden. And in case you didn't see that, I will walk in here and show you why. So this chip particular coop, we would keep deep bed, I mean, uh, keep wood chips in and it would be like deep bedding. And they have since decomposed and turned into some of the most beautiful soil you will ever see. And so we have decided to turn it into a garden area because we're not using it currently as a chicken coop. So we pulled the wire off the top and um, we we're actually just talking this morning and Jacob is wanting a bigger garden. One of the raised beds has been his for a cent. Well, we gave it to him last year to plant and we've, he wants a bigger garden so he can grow more stuff. And I think we're going to let Jacob plant this this year. And this will be just whatever he wants it to be. Whatever he wants to plant in this is what's going to go in here. And we're going to let him play with that. We'll let him live and learn. If we know, even if we know it may not be the best thing to plant in here, we're going to let him do it just so he can learn and experience that it didn't do good. Or if it did do good, you know, he'll know. So we're just going to let this be a little bit of a learning experience and that was for his request that he was going to do it himself just yeah he, he don't could. want our help yeah. on it he's done told us that he doesn't want us to help him with it he don't want us to pick out what he's going to plant he wants it all so that's what we're going to do we're going to let him have it so right against that bed though we have our container gardens that we have put in just recently um, nothing is planted in any of these yet, except for this one. It's got lettuce in it. Then these two right here, or these three actually have potatoes in them. And they're starting to come up too. Look at there. Oh yeah. Right there. And then this one right here is just regular. That's our perennial potatoes. Yeah, that's the ones that come <laughs> up every year in this pot. We dig these potatoes out every year. And we still have... We've had potatoes in that pot for what? The last three or four years. Yeah, probably. Like, and they just keep coming back. <laughs> I did add to it this year. So there'll be potatoes coming up all around in it this time. Because I, I added potatoes to it. But um, this is our sweet potato slips starting here. We uh, They're in the ground. Um, but no new slips have shot up yet because it's been too cool. But um, anyways, this is where we start our sweet potato slips. This bed right here has been sort of an experiment for the past year as well. Come over here and we'll show them how this looks. So this bed here is later last year when we done a video on putting beds to rest for the winter. And I was trying to explain that you can pretty much use anything as mulch in your beds. Anything you've got laying around, if it's some type of organic matter material, you can use it. So underneath all this, we have corn stalks that we put in. Now they did not decompose um, quite like I thought they would. However, I'm just going to leave them here because they will eventually. And then later on, I came in and dumped a ton of leaves on top of it. But if you dig down here, man, this looks amazing. Get a close up of that. Look at that. That is amazing. And look at the worms. Look right there. They're all in it. So, this bed right here is just sort of something we're playing with. I do have potatoes planted right along the edge here. I don't see any of them coming up yet. So, they may, they're may they a little bit behind though. And then right over on the end here is some blackberries that uh, I had one that I, I thought was going to die and I just stuck it in the corner here. Well, it took off last year and then it run some leaders out and rooted there and rooted over there. So I've just left them. I mean, I like blackberries. I put them tomato cages in there for them to be staked up with and I'm just gonna leave them here. I don't see what they're hurting. 
then typically here nothing's going on here yet so you know we'll probably have green beans growing up these trellises and um we do have a sunflower to come up on its own but you know none of this is really planted yet this has some potatoes that are coming up all by themselves in it then in this little section right here we've got this mint that i'm pretty sure is going to take over this area this peach tree was a seedling. This seedling is only one year old. It popped up last spring up there in that chicken coop. So we dug it out um, over the winter and planted it here. But that much growth come off of that seedling in one year. That's amazing. So that's one thing I've noticed about peaches, like seedling peaches. They have a ton of vigor. Like they grow amazing. They may not have good peaches on them. That's something we won't know until it gets time for it to have peaches. But man, they grow with so much vigor, it's unreal. The country's blooming. Uh, yeah, that so, country is. Yeah, I think it's so pretty when it goes to blooming. It does. There's a peach tree right down in the pasture, right next to that br brush pile that's only two years old. Right there, the green. And the reason I know it's two years old is because two years ago we burnt that brush pile. So there's no way it could have been in there before that. And it is already over my head high and of course it's growing and all that ash and everything else so it's got some good soil to work with but still overhead high in two years from a seed that's just crazy there we have our broccoli that's already planted and they are looking really good um i'm really liking this this looks great um, and we're still i mean the house is right behind the building there, so you can see how close we still are right. with all of this. Right. This is Jacob's raised bed um, that he plants every year, and so I'm not 100% sure what he's going to be planting in here this year. I know he's mentioned cucumbers, and for some reason, he's wanting to grow some onions this year. So we may actually plant some onions today, um, some more onions. Then we got our apple tree that we planted back in the spring, or back in the winter. I guess it's been a few videos back now, hasn't it? Yeah. And it's just now starting to put out. It's it's looking pretty good. We stuck a few daffodils in the ground there from, those actually came from her family cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, we dug them up up there and brought some back down here. That's kind of mine and Andy's thing. Like we uh, collect daffodils, but I feel like we collect them from places that mean- that sentimental. That, yeah, that mean something to us, um, which is, I don't know, like, because we've got some in the front. Like, they came from uh, the place where we got married at, which is mm -hmm. my daddy's farm. And so we've got those. you got some from your grandma. You've got yeah. some, um, we've from got some from the over, grandma that lived here. Right. And then too. we've got some from over where we cut hay at, that old home place. Right. We've got some from over there. And yeah. we've bought some, too. Well, yeah, but they all but, look different. They all have their own characteristics and I can look at them and say, well, that come from there and right. that come from there. But the only one, the ones that come from the cemetery, now we don't know what they're going to look like. No, we didn't see those yeah. in bloom and they were actually growing in the middle of the woods. So, you know, we just went down and dug them up. I don't know what they're going to look like. I know. They had already bloomed when we were up there this spring. Um, but I think I would like this place to one of these. So around here, a lot of places, like a lot of old home places and stuff, when you drive by them, there's daffodils everywhere. And I want that to look like, I want this place to look like that one of these days. I want year, you know, two or 300 years from now when no, I mean, there might not even be nobody living here at that time, but I still, you know, the daffodils will always be here unless somebody does some major excavation or something. Those daffodils will already be, will always be here. And I wanted somebody to get, just drive down the road to look at that and be like, wow, you know, somebody probably used to live there if, you know, nobody's living here at that time. Because we don't know what's going to happen two or three hundred years down the road from now. Who knows? We may not even be here. But I mean, nobody may be here by then. But, you know, but still, like, I want that history because I think it's so cool to ride by these old home places now. And there not be a house left. There not be anything left but a big old patch of daffodils. And you're like, you know. I bet somebody used to live there and that was somebody's flower garden. They, you know, I bet they loved seeing those every year and now they're just out there all alone. But I, I just, I don't know. I like seeing that, so I kind of want the same thing here at some point. All right, back to the trees. We got a pear tree here. This is only a two year old pear tree and it's, it's loaded with pears right now. Fingers crossed, 
we don't have another cold snap to kill these things. Which we may have to pull some of them off. Yeah, it may not support that many. Yeah, because look here, y'all. It is. It's loaded, though. This is a kefir pair. Yeah, we're probably going to have to pull some of them off. It'll break it all to pieces. That's a bad thing about these fruit trees. They typically get loaded up so much they can't hold them up. Then the peach trees are still looking great. Look at those peaches. I mean, it is loaded with them. Can't wait to see these either, man. I love peaches. So this is only our second year of ever having peaches on these trees because they typically, typically get bit by frost. And so far, knock on wood, they had not this year. This one's loaded as well. This is a different variety. We don't know what these two peaches are. We've had them for eight years probably. Oh yeah, wow. They've been here just about ever since me and you've been married. Yeah. We, I think we planted them then. So something else we're gonna do this year is like where we top dress around our trees each year with compost, you can see like, look at that. That's a great place to be growing something. So what we're going to do this year, and I think Jacob's going to kind of take part in, in, in it as well, is we're going to plant some of our garden around these fruit trees and let it serve as like a dual purpose. Not only are we growing fruit, but we'll be growing vegetables as well. You know, and we can do that until they get big. Once they get big, they'll shade it out to the point you, we can't do that anymore. But we're going to take advantage of having this good looking soil here while we can. And this is our oldest pear tree. This one's been here the same amount of time that those peaches have. And uh, we've only ever got pears off of it one time. One time, yep. And we have pears all over it right now. Like that year we got them, I was like, I didn't even know what these pears look like. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. I think this might be one of those Bart Bartlett, Bartlett pears. They're red, whatever they are. I, They're I can't... little red pears. Yeah, we don't know because back then we just planted the tree and we really didn't pay much attention to what variety they was. And we didn't write it down anywhere either. We're good at that. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of the way all these apple trees right here are too. Like, we don't know what they are. We should have made it like a little drawing and kept up with what each variety was. But when we planted them, you know, we just didn't. We just didn't. Look at those beautiful apple blossoms. I love apple blossoms. I think they are just... Well, it's like peach blossoms. I don't know, they're just so pretty. We got this plum tree that we planted right here. And I'm gonna have to tie it up because the wind has been so awful lately that it's starting to blow this tree over. So I'm gonna have to fix me a stick up here and sort of brace that thing up until, until it takes a good root. Because we just planted that one at the same time we planted that other little apple tree up there. We also have two cherry trees up here in the yard as well, and both of them are actually coming out really nice too. But they're planted back up there in our yard beside our little cow pasture. But all of these apple trees have bloomed really nice this year. But See, we got, oh, I do have more yarrow. <laughs> yeah, there's yarrow everywhere down here. This come from two little sprigs that we pulled up up there around that peach Literally, tree. Literally, it was, was a front. wad. Like, it was just a... Yeah, like, we just grabbed them and pulled them up and, and stuck them <laughs> in the ground down here. And, man, <laughs> have they grew. Yeah, it didn't seem to, uh, I mean, bother it, did it? No. They're doing great. And that's okay down here. That's going to be some nice natural mulch around these apple trees. Right down there at the very bottom, I have another peach tree that got started by seedling. It, it popped up. So we actually had an apple tree that died down there. So I replaced it with one of those peach tree seedlings. It's just, it's only about that tall right now. It's looking pretty good. But over here is Berry Hill. Everything on Berry Hill right now is just exploding. It looks so good. And so Berry Hill is right below our pig lots. Our little pigs are in this building right now. Then they'll come out here and then they'll go out to the woods. But it's right just on, it's a pretty steep hillside. I know you can't tell it from the video, but it's actually pretty steep. Um, and I think the runoff from the pig lot really. I think it helps with that. It helps a lot, yeah. But it's doing nice. It's doing really good. We have several blueberries that were just planted this year, like this one. And I think there's a couple more out here. And then some of them have been planted two years, I believe. 
um, but they're all looking really good. They're all loaded up with blooms. Like that one right there, I mean, it's, it's full. I think that one might have been here for two years. Look at, I mean, that's the one we moved and it finally started having good blueberries on it. Remember that? This one? Yeah. Yeah, this one right here was actually an older blueberry bush, but it was planted up near the house and uh, we had planted, I don't know, maybe five or six blueberries out here at that time and they were all doing really well. This one never really done that great up there, so we decided to move it down here and it's been here now for, I think we might have transplanted it last spring. Thanks. So. Maybe something like maybe that. Maybe the fall before. But um, it's looking really good too. And the blueberries were actually good on it last year. They weren't good on it when they were at the house. For they some were reason. sort of dry, they were weren't dry, they? Yeah. For some reason. But in amongst all this, we have strawberries planted everywhere. And the strawberries are doing. Yep. Look at that. Good because we planted these what in the fall. Yeah, most of these were planted in the fall. Some of them, I think, right up here are the ones we planted this past. I mean, this spring. But there's a tree. Let's see, across here, I believe. Look at those giant leaves on those strawberries. I know, they're beautiful. I know. I believe these right across here in this little section we planted this spring. I know I planted those right there above it this spring, but they're all looking really good. Um, and see, we're still not far from the house. There's the house. This so, is somewhere again we have to come every day. And, feed this, these and, and this also makes it nice. I know we've said it multiple times in videos, but you know, we make our daily rounds feeding everything. And when all of the berries and stuff start coming in down here, while you're out feeding, you can just simply stop and pick you a few berries for a snack or. And boy, when it's the heat of the summer and you're hot, them fresh berries, it ain't nothing like it. No, it ain't. So there's our two, our two muscadine vines. We never did do any pruning on these <laughs> like we should have. Oops. And I feel like it's probably too late to worry about it now. So I'm just gonna let them go and just let them do their thing we have two blueberries in here that are swallowed up by strawberries right now which was the plan that was the plan that's what we wanted um but right there's one and then this there's is another our goal one. for all the strawberries that are on the hill you see all these strawberries here these now these are like two or three years old yeah but that's our goal for the entire hillside hopefully eventually maybe i don't know if it'll ever be this covered or not but that's what we would like like to see and look at the blooms on those. Yep. They're loaded up with them. And that's a raspberry. Right there. Right, yeah. Yeah. And then there's a blackberry in between that and then another raspberry on the end. And all this right here is blackberries. Yeah, this one's the raspberry and that one on the end is the raspberry. This is a blackberry. But it's not but a very good blackberry. It's not a good blackberry at all. I don't know what kind of blackberry it is, but it's nowhere near as good as these up here. It even looks different, whatever it is. I don't. Where did that even come from? Um, it was the lady that gave me these blackberries right here also gave me that one. Oh, okay. It was in with all those blackberries. It came from the same place. Um, I can't remember where that was. I mean, what she didn't never she I don't even know if she knew what variety or anything they were. She just kind of like us had a big blackberry patch and. You know, you just get multiple blackberry bushes off of each plant because they come down and root. So like all in here, there's new plants coming up. We will be digging up some of these new vines here before long. And down through here is a bunch of comfrey down through there and strawberries as well. Right here's one. I cut the runner off of it the other day and so it's coming on out. Right here's the other blueberry bush that's been planted here. And all this stuff is just kind of planted in together, working together and, you know, It may just, look like a jungled up mess, but I mean, it works. It may look like a jumbled up mess, but it may, boy, it, does it produce some food. That's right. So all across here, there's blueberries, like, I mean, I said blueberry. Blackberry stalks, see that right there was one that had rooted and come down and then there's the new cane that I've already got tied up onto the trellis here. But, you know, it's amazing how these things reproduce. Right here's a new blue, uh, new blackberry coming out. You can see right there's where I cut the cane, the, the shoot off was right there. And so it's just rooted in and right there's your new, your new plant that's gonna be coming out. And there's some 
trees. We don't want those. So that pretty much, I think that pretty much wraps up the gardens and stuff that we have up here at the house. So that's just showing you kind of here what we grow at our house. Our uh, big potato patch that you saw us planting is about a mile away, uh, along with where we'll plant our field corn and everything. And we'll show you that um, a little later on. We'll go up there and give you all an update on that. We just wanted to kind of show you what all we've got going on right here around the house, right here in early spring. And is the grounds a little, still a little too cool to start really hammering digging down in, on digging planting. in and planting a lot of stuff? <laughs> but that should change real soon because we're right. looking to. Uh, we're, we're, I think we're supposed to have the next week is supposed to be up close to eighty all week long. Mm -hmm. Even though today it <laughs> it's cold. it still feels like winter yeah, time today. It's cold today. But uh, so most of this stuff too, a good thing to mention would be that what you've seen so far right here is just on probably an acre and a half. And this is where we grow as far as vegetables, fruits, and things like that. This is what you saw today. That's where we grow most majority of, of our food. Most of our food, right? Right. So I mean, it's not taking a whole lot of land. The animals take the most land, of course. Um, yep. And if you're interested in seeing those, I did a little tour of those, what, a couple months ago. Uh, maybe we can do another one of those. Yeah, eventually. we should probably do an updated one because now we have pigs, we have the meat chickens. Yeah. And, uh, but we might do that later on. But we hope this video encouraged you today that you, you can do this. You can grow your own food. You don't have to have a huge 50 acre farm, nothing like that. Um, especially for vegetables and fruits. We grow a ton, a ton of food here, just right here around the house, so. I wanna say that, you know, as far as, you know, we do have our potatoes planted up the road there in a bigger field, and we plant down across the creek in that garden. We're gonna have quite a bit planted in that garden as well this year. However, you know, if we done a little bit more um, work up here, we could probably grow every single vegetable and fruit that we need on roughly like i said probably an acre and a half you know but where most of this is yard and stuff like that we just haven't got to the point where we're ready to till up the yard yet <laughs> even though we have in spots but but you know what i'm trying to say is though you know if you had roughly an acre of land around your house you could probably grow just about everything you need to eat except for your animals and you know, that would be the hard part but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let us know what you think in the comments. And uh, be sure to check out the Facebook page. We love to see people sharing their gardens and things. We occasionally go on there and share stuff, but that's kind of just to bring the True Grit community together. Um, ask questions, share your garden pictures. We love to see that stuff, don't we? Yep. Uh, love to see what you're doing in the gardens and stuff. But anyways, guys, till we see y'all on the next one, y'all have a good one. Have a good one, y'all.